This is Josh Hart here, four seconds out. Delighted today to be joined by the Leeds Warrior, Josh Warrington. Josh, it's good to see you. How is everything today, my friend? Yeah, it's good. Um, interesting day. We decided to um, have a bit of media afternoon instead of like an, a standard press conference. Um, obviously, we've got a show this weekend. Um, first, my promotional debut being broken in, shall we say. Um, working alongside uh, via, my manager's company, VIP Promotions. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it, looking forward to it. How did the opportunity for yourself to get involved on the promotional side of things come about? Um, so, Steve Wood has been manager from day one. Um, turned pro women in 2009 and stayed with him since. Um, obviously, as your, your career goes on, opportunities come about and people try to poach you. But I've stayed loyal to Steve and, and um, you know, we've, we've learned and we've grown together. We've gone from the small shows all the way from English title to, to world title, so um, it's been a hell of a ride, a hell of a journey. Um, but yeah, he, he gave me an opportunity and very grateful for it because boxing, fortunately for myself, does come to an end at some point and um, you know you have to start making waves for what comes next. I've learned enough in the game in terms of you know, what happens inside the ring and outside the ring to be able to pass some of that knowledge on to you know, the next generation of fighters. And what was it about getting involved with the promotion and becoming a promoter that made you say yes to do it, getting involved with it? Just to work, be able to obviously work alongside Steve, which would be a pleasure, and, and just give myself a focus. I think um, a lot of former fighters tell me that you need to focus. Um, you need to focus and you need to, if you want to be you know, in the sport, then you need to get into something straight away because otherwise you'd be tempted to pull the gloves back on and say I'm making a comeback and like I say I just, I've been doing this sport long enough to not want to do something stupid like that like once you retire retire you know not be tempted to come back um, so yeah just a big opportunity and like I said be able to pass my knowledge on um, and hopefully find the next world champion from Leeds and obviously it's moving forward while you're not retiring yet you do have a massive fight coming up September 21st at Wembley Stadium, you take on Anthony Kakachi. First of all, how honoured do you feel to be a part of the first Riyadh season card in London? Yeah, it's a massive opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm quite honoured in the fact that the um, ex excellence Turkey Al Sheikh wanted, wanted me to be part of it. Um, you know, I think any, other, any fight would have been you know, jumping to put the hand up and say, yeah, I'll be, on, I'll be on the card, I'll be on the card. But yeah, it specifically asked for me. And, you know, talks about Kikachi being on there as well. He wanted me as an opponent, and um, like I say, whilst I've been sat around waiting for an opportunity to come out, the boxing guards have answered me, and it, not only is it a hell of an opportunity, but what a show to be on as well. So um, it's one of them fights what's given me a fear factor. I've certainly got the edge about me going in camp and going about my daily business. And uh, September 21st, I can make a bit of issue for myself. So before we talk about the fight in more detail, you've obviously fought at a stadium before your beloved Ellen Road. Does this occasion have the potential to beat that night? Um, I, wouldn't, I don't want to try to compare it like that, obviously. Boxed at Edinburgh Stadium as well, that one didn't end too great, but yeah, um, you'll have to ask me that like after. You know, it's, Ellen Road is special because it's personal and it's the first time I've boxed for world title and all the other things that went into it, like, you know, the rival with Lee. But, um, and Lee Selby but this one obviously the National Stadium his history card and to become a two weight three time world champion is special in itself as well so yeah let's talk about that after fair enough fair enough and what do you make of Anthony Kakachi as an opponent he's dangerous he's a hell of a hell of a size um, but at the same time he's a gentleman he's a, he's a real nice guy um, I've watched him throughout the years when he was at Queensbury um, seeing like box likes of Liam Woodstock um, and obviously watched his win of the week against Joe Cordina. I know he, he can switch up his styles. Um, and I know that I'm in for a, for a tough all night, but um, it's one that I'll certainly be prepared for on the 21st of September. And how quickly was this fight put together? Because we know that you were targeting a, elite, a rematch with Lee Wood, and then out of nowhere, this Kakashi fight has appeared. How quickly was it all made? Got mentioned um, before it was announced once or twice. No one really came of it. He got kind of flirted with, would you fight him? Yeah, I would. Okay. Don't think you're going to get the opportunity though. Right, fair enough. That's it. And then within eight hours of negotiating, the day before the press conference, it was offered 
it was negotiated, it was signed, and that was it. It just it was it was a whirlwind, absolute whirlwind, and uh, yeah, one of the craziest days I've had in boxing outside of the ring. That's for sure. And were you surprised that the fight ended up? getting made in the end because you mentioned there just being a bit of a whirlwind how surprised were you when the fight did actually come off um yes yeah, yeah a little bit taken aback I mean I think there were times I was sat at the top table at, well sat on the table at the press conference not the top table um but there were times I was sat there thinking what the hell what an opportunity um to try to come to terms of what what kind of challenge we've taken on but um you know, every day since that, every every second since that, you know, the, the, the strength keeps on getting bigger. That this is meant to be. This is meant to be. This is this is what we've been asking for. And, and like I say, the boxing gods have delivered and an opportunity to get back on top. And when this fight was announced, some people were making some comments online. Obviously, this is your first fight at super featherweight, and saying you're, you're not, you don't necessarily deserve a world title shot just yet. How do you respond to that backlash from, the, from people online? As always, people are going to respond for any, op- any fight getting any opportunity. But yeah, it's my first one at, um, at Super Feather. But you know, this is my eighth world title fight as well. And you know, the, his excellence wants to put Sean with exciting fights. Obviously, Anna Kikachi is a new champion. And, um, and I announced earlier in the year that I was moving up. I mean, constant fight of the year contenders if not fight of the year, actual fights. So, it wants excitement. And like I say, it's, it's not like it's my first rodeo. I've, it's my eighth world title fight. And uh, yeah, my, my, my first one at a new, a new weight, but there's many fighters who fight divisions and get opportunities at other weight divisions later on. So, you know, boxers want to be entertained. Fans want to be entertained. And uh, and I'm going to bring entertainment and a hell of a challenge on the 21st. And like I mentioned earlier, obviously we know that you were looking at the rematch with Lee Wood. Uh, from what you know, what was the reason the fight never got finalised? I, I, I don't have no words. Like at one point, I did think it was down to the, the TV networks being a bit difficult in uh, coming up with maybe Lee's demands. But and at one point, I stopped blaming Lee, but um, you know, started to blame the powers that be. But I, 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 I don't really don't know. If I think it's I, all I know is I did everything in my powers. You know, I accepted any venue, any day. I, I took le- obviously I was going into there less money, but I took even a lower pay back than that to make it happen. I did everything I could do on my side. You know, changed dates a few times, changed venues a few times. No else I could have done really. So you have to ask him. And also, you mentioned moving up in weight regardless. Was the plan to move up and face Lee Wood? Because obviously we knew that the, f- the first fight against you was going to be his last. Were you moving up to try and get that rematch or were you just also done at Feather? I've been making Feather since 2012. Um, there were times when I spoke about it in our camp and I, I think we said it amongst each other. Beat Lee and I'll announce that I'm going up. Maybe fight caught Joe Cardina if Eddie can't deliver like a, like a unification fight. But yeah, his intention was always to move up. Been making feather, like I say, since 2012. It's over. It's over. You know, 10 years or so. 12 years, I think. I've been making it. So yeah. Um, just, I feel better with like as I'm getting older, the heavyweights, and I think that can be a bit of resurgent of you know Vince, Vincent Josh Warrington. And how big is the desire to still have a rematch with Lee Wood before you, before you retire? At this moment in time, it's kind of been parked. Obviously, I've got a bigger challenge ahead. I don't want to be wasting too much energy. Yeah, I've mentioned his name a few times today in different interviews, but um, it all comes down to 21st, doesn't it? And then uh, then go from there. Were you a bit surprised with how it all, I guess, obviously going into the first fight, there was a lot of respect between the two of you, and then the fight finishes, and it's almost like the, the fans started to see that respect just fade away. Were you surprised when the respect that you two had kind of just started to fade off? Um, yes and no yes because of how well it was before and no because I always felt like he was playing a game I think um, there's moments when he was trying to be amicable just for the sake of being amicable maybe because he knew that he had a hell of a task in hand um, but since the way that he's acted I think he's just shown his true colours you know, I think he's um, I've said it many times he's a bit of a dick you know, the way he's gone about 
the way he's conducted himself after the fight. Yeah, of course, I've had a moment. I thought the fight was such controversial. But I said a few things like, I don't think he's had his punch to that venue with. I think that down belongs to Kiko, then Michel Lara. There's no wrong with that. It's just an opinion. But my opinion of who I faced. And he's got upset about that. And then he's just said, constantly putting things on, online. Like, Any time I get asked a question, I answer it. But then he'll go online and he'll see that and go online and, and just be a bitch about it. You know, we've come to face to face and I said to him, if you want to do something about it, do it now. And he's turned and walks his back, so he's a coward if you ask me. Um, but yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not surprised because he kind of just, that arrogance he's got about him, you know, it's, that's just who he is. And just very lastly, obviously, we know that you're on the Sept September 21st card. Yes, Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois top the bill. Who do you believe wins that fight and why? Uh, AJ, just AJ. It, both can bang. Uh, Dubai is a top lad, but I think um, the age is with AJ at this moment in time. Sim Scott is that bit spite behind him again. That's not to say that Dubai lands on everyone. He can't end the show because he can. But I've just, the age is with AJ at the minute. Josh, appreciate your time massively. Thank you very much. And best of luck on September 21st. Thank Cheers. You, Thank you very Cheers much. Today. Cheers, Josh. Thank you. Thank you.